شهداء بالقسط ولا يجرمنكم شنعان قوم على الا تعدلوا اعدلوا هو اقرب للتقوى واتقوا الله ان الله خبير بما تعملون صدق الله العظيم My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh My dear brothers and sisters One of the great teachings of our religion Islam is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had very strictly uh, commanded Muslims that whatever they do they must remember that they have to do justice justice with everyone justice with yourself and justice with everyone everyone that is around you and for this word justice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used two words in the Quran what is the word Adl and the second word is Qist Qist of Sinta so Adl and Qist for example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wa aqsitu inna Allah yuhibbul waqsitin always do justice why because inna Allah yuhibbul waqsitin Understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who do justice. So the word here is Qist. And the ayah which I recited to you just now, in this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have, is, used, is using the word Adl. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I'dilu. Always do justice. Because this is the basis of taqwa That you are doing justice So wa'adilu Inna So wa'adilu Always do justice Wa aqrabu lit taqwa This is the basis of justice And wa taqullah And fear the punishment of Allah Inna Allah khabirun bima ta'abadun Undoubtedly, Allah has complete knowledge about what you are doing. So, my dear brothers and sisters, this ayah is one of those ayahs of Quran that taught Muslims that whatever they do, they must not oppress anyone. You must never oppress anyone. Because Allah is watching over you. Always do justice. Why? Because Allah is just. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to see people doing justice. Whenever the believers are doing justice, whenever they are doing adl and tist, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure would be upon upon those people. And when people forget about Adl and justice and they start oppressing people, then all kind of calamities come in the world. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this ayah, Ya Yuhuladina Amu, all those people who believe, La Yajri Matna Shana'anu Qabin Allah Allah Ta'alim. All those people who believe your alliances or your affiliation. Towards people, certain group of people, should not stop you from doing justice. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that do not look who is in front of you when it comes to doing, to doing justice. Do justice with everyone. Then Allah said, Walaw ala anfusikum, abil walidaini walakrameen. When you are doing justice, do justice with yourself. Do justice to your walidah, your parents. 
والأقربين do justice with your relatives. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when the person who is in front of you, who we are dealing with, if that person is your friend, your relative, or you have some kind of, you know, soft corner towards somebody, so do not cut corners, do not do the wrong thing just because he's your friend, he's your relative. When it comes to justice, do justice with everyone. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, in the world right now, there is very little justice left. There is all tuqiyas that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, bahri, which means oppression. If you are powerful, you can have your way. You can oppress people. The big nations are oppressing small nations. Strong people are oppressing weak people. In the world, only the powerful can have his way. The weak people are always wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who told us that before the day of judgment Adl will be taken away meaning people will stop doing Adl there will be no Adl left so a person will pass by a grave and he will be frustrated with all kind of in, uh, in, uh, injustices that had been prevailing in the world. So this person will be so fed up, so frustrated with the way the world is going. So he will be passing by a grave and he will desire that, that I wish I was buried in this grave instead of this uh, dead person. That will be the level of zul in the world. Just take that instance of Syria, let's say, right? So many times you have seen that photograph, right? And this photograph became so popular in the wrong way. So popular when you see that a small kid are sitting next to the grave of their parents. And when the, when the journalist asked these children, one or two of them said that I wish my mom was alive and I was in this grave. A, a child was 10, 20 years old. Because he sees that there is all injustice. Nobody is willing to listen to him. There is bombing, killing. There is no place where these small kids can go and find shelter. Nobody is listening. Only the powerful people can have their way. Right? Same way in uh, what you call uh, Yemen, right? Same thing in the rest of the world, in Palestine, in Kashmir, in the rest of the world. There's Zul. There is Zul. And then when you come to Muslim society, most of the time in our society, it says we are doing, doing zulm upon each other. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us that we as believers should do justice. Right. And brothers and sisters, one of the things that is wrong and our Rasulullah sallallahu told us that it is wrong is that when you see injustices and you, and you remain quiet. When you remain quiet, <laughs> And somebody is hurting somebody and you are not trying to stop it or you are not speaking against it or if you think that who cares he is not hurting me right. so your silence is zulm silence is zulm because by not raising your voice 
by not doing what you could have done to come to bring this zulm to a stop you are actually a, a partner in this zulm so therefore rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man ra'a minkum munkaran falyughayyirhu biyadi fa in lam yastati' fa bi lisani wa in lam yastati' fa bi qalbi and wa dhalika adhafu al-iman aw kama qala alayhi salatu wassalam when you see a zulm when you see something wrong how can you be quiet right if you have the power to hold the hand of the zalim of the oppressor you can just go forward and hold the hand of that person no brother wrong you cannot hurt him you are doing wrong i have to stop you so rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if you have the power to do so then you must do it you must do it But let's say if a government is oppressing people, you cannot stop them. So Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, "Go and protest. Protesting is your right." So Rasul said, "For be lisani, talk against injustice. Talk about injustice. Go and protest." <laughs> try to help those people who are being oppressed so if you cannot stop a person physically go and talk about it protest okay many a time we think that protesting against zulm is a waste of time no my my dear brothers sisters you have to speak up if you remain silent over zulm you know you are equally responsible for this uh, tyranny you have to speak and then rasul 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 allah said that if you find yourself so weak that you live in a place or in a country in a society where if you will raise your voice if you will protest you know you will face hardship then at least consider wrong as wrong never consider wrong as okay wrong will always remain wrong but here you and i find ourselves in a place where we can raise our voice we can legally protest we can we i you must not take Uh, oppression as something okay right therefore allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying i'dilu always do justice and my dear brothers and sisters when you yourself are in a position of doing justice to people then remember allah is watching over you you must understand that you must do justice even if it is against your own self I give you a few examples. Our Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right, is sitting. A Muslim, a Sahabi, brings a Yahudi of Medina with him, and he said that Ya Rasul Allah, we have a conflict, a big conflict. I am a Muslim, as you know, and this person is a Yahudi, a Jewish person. We had a business dealing, and he cheated me. And I want you to inflict punishment on this Jewish person. He cheated me. He's a cheater. Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Okay, let me hear the whole case." So the whole case was presented to Rasul Rasul sallallahu. Rasulullah gave this Muslim time to come up with proof. Rasulullah gave this Jewish person time to come up up with proof. Both of them brought the proofs, and after looking into it, Rasulullah said, "Look, decided against the Muslim." Rasulullah said, "Then, based on your proofs, you are wrong, and based on proofs." The, the Jewish person is right. So 
when Rasulullah sallam passed his judgment in favor of the Jewish person, you know what this Muslim did? He was not satisfied. He was not satisfied with the judgment of, of Rasul sallam. And guess what he did? He went to another Sahabi. And guess who? Whom did he go to? Umar radiallahu that he knew the nature of Umar and he said that Umar I have to talk to you in private now this person is complaining <laughs> is complaining about against Rasulullah to Umar and Umar said yes what happened he said no private one to one conversation he said, okay, well, nobody is there he said you know I went to Muhammad Sallallahu or Rasul Sallallahu and this is what happened to Allah. And you know, in the end, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gave a judgment against me. I'm a Muslim. But he gave judgment against me and in favor of a Yahudi. And he's Ghayr Maktubi Alayhim. Al Maktubi Alayhim. So Umar radiallahu anhu said that if Rasulullah had decided something, why in the world are you coming to me now? Do you know? What you are doing? You are objecting, raising an, an objection to the decision of our Rasulullah. You know what this amounts to? This amounts to kufr. This amounts to kufr. If you are saying that Rasulullah did something wrong, he is the Rasul of Allah. And Allah and Quran have said, وَمَا يَنْتِقُوا عَنِ الْغَوَانِ هُوَا إِلَّا وَحِيُّهَا Then whatever my Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is talking, is designing, that is based on wahi. So you are no more Muslim then. He said, no, no, Umar, put all this aside, listen to me. Umar said, look at one minute, give me a minute, keep sitting here. Umar went inside his room, came out with a big sword, big sword, sword. And he said, if you are not satisfied with the, the decision made by Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then this sword, right, is going to, to decide your fate. He ran away. Rasul, now Umar went to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala at that time revealed one ayah of Quran. And this is an ayah for you and me, everybody, brothers and sisters. It teaches us the maqam and the makan and the place of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, la yu'minun hatta yuhakkimuka fi ma shajara bayna thumma la yajidu fi atfusim haradun min ma qadai wa yusallimu taslima Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in the name of your Rabb, these people are not Muslim until they accept everything that you say everything that Rasul sallallahu said is acceptable to you because you are the Rasul of Allah. You are you speak with wahi. So anybody who will object to Rasul Sallallahu Allah Subhanahu said that person is lying. He is not a, a believer. And wa yusallimu taslima. Whatever Rasul decide, you must surrender yourself to the decision of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi So this ayah teaches us. The place of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you cannot object. You have to accept whatever Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says. That is the maqam and the place of Rasul. Second thing that we learn, brothers and sisters, is justice. How Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they made justice, even if it was against a Muslim. Right? Now, at the same time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَوْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ If you had done something wrong, accept that, that, that you had done wrong. Against your own self. Now this is the highest level of justice. That you accept, you confess that I was wrong. Right? This, is a, this needs lots of courage. You know? It's just like my dear brothers and sisters, you have to kill your ego. You know, Imam Malik, 
I will never forget this story, right? Imam Malik. Who was Imam Malik? Imam Malik was born in the year 94 Hijri, first century. And our Rasulullah prophesied once that a great Imam is going to be born in my city, Medina. And people from different parts of the world will come to my city to learn from him. And that was Imam Malik. So regarding him, Rasulullah prophesied. So people were flocking to him. His fame was everywhere. And he did not leave Medina. He loved Medina so much that Imam Mali was born there, raised there, studied. He taught for years and years. He never left Medina. Right? And he, he never walked in Medina with his slippers on. Never. Out of respect to Rasulullah. Somebody asked Imam Malik that it's so hot. I saw the Zohar time, you know, in, the, in the noon time, even you are coming from Asir, it is so hot and you are us walking in Medina barefoot. Why? He said that out of respect for Rasulullah because I do not know where the foot of Rasulullah is, meaning Rasulullah has walked on these lanes, right? I don't want to put my filthy, dirty uh, shoe at the same place. Now this was his love, I know. Uh, so the the ego here, the ego here, brother, is that one villager in his village, right, uh, was sent by the villagers with a list of questions. Let's say thirty questions regarding Islam, Quran, Hadith. So this this this. Questions were from all the villagers. They selected this particular person that, okay, you go travel from here to Medina, go to this great Imam, Imam Malik, and ask him these 30 questions. Because he knows the answers of all these questions. So this person, this villager, traveled to Medina and went to Imam Malik and said, well, I have come from there. These 30 questions are the questions of the villagers. So please give me the answer. So look at the ego here. How Ahlullah, Awliya Allah killed that ego. So Imam Malik took those questions and he said, okay, come tomorrow. I will look into these questions. Well, the villager stayed overnight. Next day he came to Majid Nabi. Imam Malik said, okay, here are the answers to your questions. So the villager saw those 30 questions and he said, well, you have uh, answered half of the questions and half of them are, are still unanswered. So Imam Malik said that I do not know the answer to those questions. So this villager became mad. He said, people say that you are the greatest Imam living right now and you know everything. And I travel all the way from Medina, or from my village to Medina. And now you are saying that you do not know the answer to these questions? Imam Ali said, yes, I do not know. This person said, no, please, please give me the answer. So Imam Malik at that time said that, look, by giving you wrong answers, I don't want to end up in Jahannam. So for your sake, I don't want to go to hell. I do not know, I do not know. Then Imam Malik said that I had taught my nafs to say La Adri. That you know, I I do not know. That this is doing justice with yourself. Meaning, killing your ego is doing justice with yourself. To say I don't know, right? That is doing justice with yourself. Knowingly doing something wrong, saying something wrong, is like you are doing injustice to yourself. Right? You know that this is wrong, and you still speak. Right? That is doing injustice to yourself. So when you kill your, your ego, right, that is doing justice with yourself. And brother, my dear brother, Islam teaches us to do justice with yourself, with everybody and people of all faiths. All faiths. No matter who that person is. It's just like brothers and sisters, if you have taken loan from let's say a Jewish person, a Christian person, any person, don't look at that person relative when it comes to paying, paying it back. It doesn't matter. That person's relative doesn't do justice. 
right? I give you this uh, quick story. In India, you know, these days, in India you see that there's so much turmoil going on. The government there or the a group of people are so much anti-Muslim. But at the same time, we find this story. And that, that story is that a um, few years ago, um, there was a masjid there. At a, at a certain place, and then there was this open land. Some people belonging to another religion, they put up a claim that this land in front of the masjid belongs to us, not, not to Muslims. So that the case was go, was taken to the court. So when it was taken to the court, Muslims put up that claim that no, this is the masjid and the area in front of it is also belongs to the masjid. Well, when this case prolonged, the judge got frustrated and he said, well, we have to decide on this quickly. So Hindu people of other faith, they said, okay, we have one person, if he would say that this land belongs to Muslims, we will take our claims away. Who is that person? He is the Imam of that masjid. His name was Sheikh Abdul Qudus and an extremely, extremely pious person. So pious that people of all faiths used to respect him because of, because of his piety. So people of other faiths right now are saying that, look, if the Imam of this masjid will testify that this land belongs to them, we will withdraw a claim. So the Imam was called to that court. And brother, this is the beauty of Islam. When the judge asked him, the Imam said that the, the, the truth is that I know it very well that the area in front of the masjid does not belong to, to, to Muslims does not belong to the Muslim. It be, because we never bought it. Yeah, some Muslim have claimed, but that claim is phony. Wrong. So that land was given to people of other faith, not Muslims. But, but what happened? In the darkness of night, half same day after Stasim Isha, some leaders of other faiths came to meet that Imam in the darkness of night. And they said that Imam, we trusted you because of your piety. Because we understood and we believe that you are a man of God. And you prove today in the court that you are a person of piety and taqwa. And he said, teach us about Islam. Two or three of them took shahada in the, in the, in the darkness of night. The darkness of night. Then these people went to the community and they said, look, we won the case. Right? But this land is right in front of the mosque. It would be better for us to donate this uh, land to the mosque. Because they will be the one who will be using it, not us. So why make it a, 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 a big fuss? So they, they donated that land to the budget. That That is justice. Do not lie in order to benefit. Sometimes we lie for the sake of Islam. That is wrong. There are good and bad people everywhere. I'll tell you brothers, right now, you see this parking lot out there. In a few years ago, remember there was a last, uh, road, Ruby Lake Road. And then next to the road, right, that land, all that land, right, belonged to a, a, a Christian person. He was the owner. It didn't belong to us. I mean, next to the road. It did not belong to us. And we did not try to buy it at that time. Guess what? A person of other faith, he just came one day. He said that land, I think you guys 
need it. Yeah, we will need it. He said, okay, I'm donating it into it, it, it the mosque. He just donated that free of cost to, to the mosque. Went away. Right? So people... A few days ago, a brother who became Muslim and his mom, dad, everybody is non-Muslim. Whole family, non-Muslim. This brother came in and you see this twenty five hundred dollars for a musalla, right? He said, I would like to uh, buy one musalla for myself, he's Muslim. He said, my mom is a non-Muslim, my dad is a non-Muslim, and my uh, brother and sister are non-Muslim. He said, Imam, I would like to buy one musalla for them as well. One musalla for them. He said, I know the ruling about Akhirah, but my Desire is that I would like to buy a few musallas for my mom and dad and, and, and the rest of the family. Bought it. Ibadullah, you cannot stop. Just like you cannot stop a non Muslim from, from donating to the masjid. Last week, a, a person, a Hindu person who is a very good friend of mine, he came and he gave $2,500 for, to buy a musalla. He is not a Muslim. He's not a Muslim. His name is right here. So this is Masjid is Baitullah. And we are Ibadullah. Servant of God. Right? So my difference is when we do justice with ourselves, when Muslims practice justice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will spread justice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help me understand. Amen.